Hello and welcome to this video. Let's take a look at one of the new masking options called intersecting masks. These new mask options were introduced into Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw late in 2021. Now I think three of them are quite well known to us. They're now called the Linear Gradient Mask, the Radial Mask and the Mask Brush. We've been using those, although under a slightly different name. Two other masks also appeared, which I think are fairly self-explanatory. Select Sky and Select Subject. Now these masks, in the brief experience I've had, work remarkably well. And they open up a better standard of image editing to all of us really. Now this brings us to intersecting a mask, which we won't see directly in the mask panel. We get to that in a slightly different way, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. Now intersecting a mask sounds rather more complicated, but my first thoughts were how, when and why would I need this option? Well, I think we have a practical example here that will help us understand where it's going to fit in. One of the first signs of less than perfect editing is when we see a darkened sky and it encroaches into the tops of any trees in a landscape or sometimes into distant hills as well. It's a dead giveaway that we've been editing that sky. And as we always say, all of our best editing should go mostly unnoticed. Well, perhaps we now have a solution in the intersect with a mask. And I think I found an image here where we can demonstrate that. Now, I always think of my editing is in two parts. There's the global editing. Those are the changes I make that affect the entire image. But once I get to a point where if I make a change in one area, it badly impacts another, that's when we need to turn to more strategic editing. And that's the position we're at here. Now, the obvious choice here, I think, is to select that sky and kill some of that lightness. Now, we would naturally turn to one of the new masks. And the obvious choice is going to be Select Sky. Now, once Adobe Camera Raw has selected it, it's going to show us the overlay. And we can see instantly that it's done a pretty good job. Incidentally, when I was working in Lightroom recently for a video, I did notice that when the overlay appears on an image and we go over to any of the sliders and move them, the overlay is automatically removed, which is quite a good thing. In Adobe Camera Raw, we have to set that. So if you'd like to set that option, and I've settled on using it in this way myself, go to these three little dots alongside that big red one there, and the option you want is this one, automatically toggle the overlay. So what it's going to do, if I go over to my exposure slider, as soon as I click and drag it down, the overlay disappears. So I can take my sky down, I can drop the exposure, I could affect the blacks and the whites to increase the contrast a bit. I can retweak the exposure, you can see the sort of things we can do. Whoops dropped it back a bit. It's looking rather blue, so of course I could do other changes like warming up the sky. But now we get to the point where we've got a real nice solid base to this image in all of the green leaves. It would be nice if I could get the top of the sky much darker to match that. Well, the natural choice for that would be to select a linear mask. So let's do that. And from the top of the screen, I'm going to click and drag down. And we see the obvious problem we have. Because if I drop the exposure down, I start to encroach on the flower. So I've either got to do a lot of work with a brush to remove that. But there is another way. Let me just reset that with a double click. Because what I can now do is I can go alongside this mask here, which is the one we can see highlighted. And in the three little dots, I get the opportunity to choose intersect the mask, and then I get a choice of what I want to intersect it with. 
Well, let's select the sky. And when we see what the overlay does, we'll instantly see the benefit we're going to get. There, the flowers removed. Now when I go to my exposure, I can be a little bit heavier at the top there if I wish to, because it's not going to impact on my flower at all. Now don't forget when you're using masks, if you wish, you can double click the mask and rename it. You can see I've done that to all of these just to give you an idea of exactly what we've done. But of course, if we just move our cursor over the mask, we get shown what it is anyway. So there's the original sky, which I darkened. There's the sky minus the petals to enable me to give that nice dark edge at the top. I've done a bit on the left edge, a bit on the right edge, and a little bit more editing of the base. But the upshot is, within a few seconds, we've got the image completed and ready to open it into Photoshop. And if I use that P key on the keyboard while we're in Adobe Camera Raw, we can jump back to where we started from. And you can see that in a very short spell of time, we've come quite a long way. Those masks allow us to really create some of the best editing we've ever been able to do within Camera Raw and Lightroom. Another step on the masking journey. I'll see you next time.